Hello there, it's Gabby here from Confidence After Cancer and I hope this finds you well. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast, it really means a lot to me. This week's topic is quite a serious one and it's all about stress. And so the title is, if you didn't already know, we are in a stress epidemic. Apparently we have the highest sickness rate at work in over 10 years. People are taking time off work just because they can't cope. So I'm going to talk to you today about if this resonates with you, if you are feeling like you are stressed or if you're feeling like your stress levels are unmanageable, what can you do? Because I really believe that getting sick is the consequence of stress, okay? And I know this because for many years I worked 12-hour days and I thought I was too busy and uh, didn't have time to be sick. I was constantly tired, but I kept on going, as many of us do because that's just how life is. That's what, what I thought at the time. That was my mindset until, you know, somebody tapped me on the shoulder. You know, the universe tapped me on the shoulder. I found a lump in my breast. And four weeks later, I was told you have cancer. Now, after that panic, I saw that the way that I had been working just didn't work for me to be healthy. I saw that we can often push ourselves until we break down and change is forced upon us often in the form of serious illness. Now, I've been healthy and clear of cancer now for 15 years, and I've kept a career and I've also run a business as well. I have more energy now than I had all those years ago, and I know it's possible to recover your health and to enjoy your career and your life after illness. So what can we do if this is touching a nerve with you? First of all, I'd like to think about an analogy that somebody told me years ago, and it's really, um, I love this, I love this imagery. If you had a goldfish in a bowl, and the goldfish is swimming around in its little bowl, as they do, and you notice one day that that goldfish had a tumour, it had a bit of a growth on it, and you also notice that the water in the goldfish tank or the goldfish bowl was really murky and dirty. So what would you do with your favourite goldfish? You'd take it out, you want to get it healed, take it out to the vet who's going to cut out that tumour, maybe give some drugs to stop the tumour growing again. But what you wouldn't do is pop that goldfish back into dirty water, would you? You'd clean it out, you'd make sure that maybe you get one of those filter things, things that has a little bubbles in to, to put more oxygen into the water. After the, the goldfish has been ill, you wouldn't pop them straight back into that environment that made them sick in the first place. But that's something that we do. Some people, and there's no judgment here, you know me, uh, we're all different. We've all got our own journey. We've all got our own path to tread. But for me, I knew that I didn't want to go back to my old goldfish bowl. I knew I had to make some changes. So the three things that I'm really going to talk about, first of all, is stress. Secondly, is people. And thirdly is food, because these are the things that have had the most impact on my life. So first of all, stress. And I do believe there's good stress and there's bad stress. You know, if there was no stress in the world, for me personally, I might not get out of bed in the morning. I might not have achieved the things that I've achieved in my life if there wasn't a certain amount of stress and a certain amount of working to a deadline. And that's great. You know, I've talked before about fight or flight, how we need that sometimes, that rush of adrenaline of working to a deadline or a uh, working hard you know to pass an exam or to give a presentation or whatever it is that maybe is challenging I find public speaking challenging it's not something that I've always enjoyed it's something that I've worked on really hard to get better at over the years but that for me at one point was really really stressful but it's something that I really wanted to do and so same with passing exams um I really wanted some of my qualifications my coaching qualifications but for me passing the exams and and the assessments were quite stressful but that's a short period of time. And that's fine. If that period of stress in your life is for a fixed period of time and it's got a purpose, that's fine. We can all cope with that with the ups and downs. As long as you go back to after that stressful time, just a period of um, rejuvenation, relaxation, looking after yourself. But we don't, particularly in corporate life, I found you hit one deadline and then there's another deadline. And the uh, management mantra of many places where I've worked has always been doing less with more or (laughs) doing more with less. I should say I got that wrong. So it's doing more, more and more targets to be achieved, but with less resources, with less people. You know, somebody in your team leaves. Oh, it's sometimes a badge of honor for people to say, oh, yeah, well, my team can step up. They can do more work with less people. Well, if you can do that, that's fine. 
But sometimes that layer upon layer of stress and extra responsibility and extra tasks to do and longer and longer hours is not really helpful. So I do believe sometimes stress can be good, but also if it's prolonged and it becomes the norm that you are always stressed and you're always working to a deadline and you never feel like you're going to catch up. You're always like the hamster on a wheel. That's not good for you. And, you know, there is a book called um, The Body Keeps Score. And I really believe that, you know, your body does keep score. If you don't treat it well, if you don't give it good nutrition, you don't get enough rest, you don't have enough enjoyment in your life. If life is all work and stress, then, yeah, come on. Somehow, somewhere you're going to feel that. And for me, it was a my cancer diagnosis. I kept getting that little whisper saying, oh, niggles, you know, you're not really enjoying life or you're not really looking after yourself. But there was always something that I thought was more important than my own self-care. So just food for thought. Again, there's no judgment here, but I know from my own experience, sooner or later, that doesn't work. The next thing I'm going to talk about with stress, and I've talked about this in other podcast episodes, is about dealing with difficult situations with people. People in our lives, you know, again, good and bad, but people can be a cause of stress for us all, whether it's, you know, a, your relationship, whether it's your family, whether it's your work colleagues, whatever it is, you've all got choices. And I, I believe for a while, oh, I can't help it. She makes me feel like that. Well, actually, nobody can make you feel like anything. You know, nobody can make me feel bad. I've allowed people to maybe push my boundaries. But I didn't set those boundaries. I didn't articulate them very well. And, and then I got really resentful when people were overstepping my boundaries and not treating me in a way that I thought was respectful. But again, I've taken responsibility for that now. And that's something that I've learned to manage, you know, quite late in life. But it is something that's made a huge difference to the quality of my life. And also it's allowed me to expand the relationships that support me, that love uh, the nurture that's around me. I want more of that in my life. So actually, you know, there's people that I don't deal with anymore. There's situations I don't deal with anymore because I want more love, understanding and support from people around me. And that's a two way street as well. I want to be able to give that back without constantly, for instance, being out with friends, have, enjoying a nice meal, but worried about my boss or worried about a task that I've got at work the next day or worrying about a conversation that I'm going to have with somebody. don't want to do that anymore. OK, there really is something about just living in the moment and getting rid of those negative people around you, either not dealing with them or if it's somebody you can't avoid managing your own uh, relationship, managing your own boundaries, setting those boundaries and being quite firm about what you will and what you won't accept. The third area that I come on is and so some people don't always make this connection between stress and food, but I really have. You know, I studied nutritional healing. I know that for me, my healing started again when I, when I started to take responsibility for the types of food that I was eating, when I was eating, the quality of the food that I was eating. And it can be a minefield. I know it can be confusing and I'm not here to say, you know, what's right and what's wrong for you. But there are some universal truths like don't eat processed food all the time and expect to be healthy. Yeah. Don't drink alcohol every day. Don't eat too much sugar every day and expect to be healthy. You know, some somehow it will catch up with you. And that's not to say you can't have a treat, but it is a treat. It's an occasional treat. You know, I love birthday cake as an example, but I don't eat that every day. I don't eat it breakfast, dinner and evening meal. I love my cake and I enjoy it but at the right time and in the right proportion, as, as long as you've got healthy balance. So again, I'm not here to lecture anybody, but sometimes part of the coaching that I do with people is taking a look at the diet and not exactly banning certain food. I, I don't like that or putting people on a diet. I really don't like that either. But it's more about thinking, getting more good stuff into you. How, you know, and it has to be something that you enjoy. Never am I going to say to somebody, yeah, well, I know you don't like kale, but you really need to eat it because it's so good for you. No, if you don't like kale, don't eat kale, for instance. There'll be healthy choices that you can make that you will enjoy. So let's work on that. And that's something that I love to do. So I've talked before about the workplace. You know, the workplace for a lot of people is where they are most stressed. And it's where quite often there's most toxic relationships as well with work. But it doesn't have to be like that. You know, work for me over the years has given me, a, you know, status. It's given me a sense of achievement. I've had some great relationships at work. Some of my best friends are people that I've worked with in the past and I've kept in contact with them for many, many years, some of them. 
And so what I want to say to you is it's all about balance. It's all about managing your health and taking responsibility for it. And that's what I love to do with my coaching clients. You know, I know that I've been healthy now and clear of cancer now for 15 years and I've balanced that with having a career and having a business as well. And I would love to share how I have more energy now than I had all those years ago when I was running on empty. And I know that it's possible to recover your health and enjoy your career and your life or your business and your family again, your relationships after illness. It doesn't have to be the end of your story. But what I would say to you is, if any of this resonates with you, and I'm not here to judge anybody, you know you better than anybody. And that's why I took quite a while, really, to get the confidence to think, yeah, well, I do know myself. I do know the things that are making me ill. You know the habits that you've had that are not serving you well. And those habits have probably undermined your health, haven't they? If you're honest with yourself. And if you want to be healthy and happy, you have to change. Okay, you have to find new ways to work that don't cost you your health. You know the saying, first the universe whispers and then it shouts. And if you still don't listen, it will hit you over the head like it did with me and my cancer diagnosis. But I'm listening now and I've taken heed. I've taken stock, taken responsibility. And, you know, the joyous thing for me is I can share what I've learned with other people. I can show them how they can have vibrant health. I can show them how they can put boundaries in place that will help them with relationships. Whatever the issue is, because we're all different and I'm not here with a set program of what people should and shouldn't do at all. When I work with a client, when I work with somebody, it's very much tailored to their circumstances and what's important for them and what their priorities are. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed my musings on stress and what you can do about them because, you know, it's not in inevitable. I'd said before we have a stress epidemic, but it doesn't have to be that way for you. You have choices, okay? And if this strikes a chord with you, I'd love to hear from you. And let's talk. Let's identify how you can keep your health, your happiness, your career, your business without losing your health again. You don't have to sacrifice yourself, my love. You deserve to be happy. Thank you so much for listening. It means the world to me. Please get in touch if I can help you with anything. Take care. Stay safe. Stay safe. Bye-bye.